Hello and welcome to another random review and how to. Today we're going to be talking about the Mr. Coffee 12 cup coffee maker. Now, this is our second one of these. The first one we got, uh, we actually used the heck out of for a couple of years, but our pot uh, actually chipped. So we had to get a new one. We couldn't find one. Uh, we couldn't find a replacement and we really didn't look super hard. But these things are so cheap. I mean, I think you're talking under $40 for this coffee maker. Now, we've had the Keurig. Uh, we've had the single pot, we've seen the pour over, we've tried it all, but we just like this. And the reason we went with this particular model is we're really kind of, if we're both off at the same time, uh, we definitely make a full pot. But if she's off on certain days and I'm working, she'll make six cups uh, and it just works for us. Instead of running out and getting coffee every day, we both do go out and get coffee. We have our places we go to, but when we're home and we're together, we use Mr. Coffee. Uh, we also use this in our camper. So we have the same model in our camper. Uh, and we just, we really like this for multiple reasons. One, the Keurig just doesn't get hot enough for us. We never liked it uh, for that reason. And the single pot stuff takes too much. It takes too much time. We just like something where we have 12 cups and we're ready to go. So I'm going to review this. I'm going to give you some overviews of everything in this. We've been using the heck out of these. Uh, and we seem to know everything that there is to know about the Mr. Coffee. So First thing I'm gonna do is just run you through the buttons. So you can see I have the time here set really easy. When you plug this in, you can just simply change the time by hitting the hour button and the minute button. So to set the time on a Mr. Coffee, it's that simple. I'm gonna get it to where it is. Ooh, right at 11, oh, we'll just go to 12. Okay, so that's how you set the time to set your delay. So there's two things you wanna know here. To set the delay is to actually set your coffee for the morning. So if you hold that button in, you'll see we're blinking here and it has it defaulted here. Well, not defaulted, but it's set at seven o'clock. So if I wanna change that, I do the same thing. I just hit the hour button to whatever time I want. I hit the mini button. Let's say I'm a 9.15. I've never had coffee that late. I'm usually done with the entire pot by then. But that's how you set the delay. So when you're done there, if you wanted to set, all you would have to do is select. I hit it twice. You'll see when you hit it, now it's off. First time it goes the regular and brew now. Hit it again, and it's on brew delay. Now, you have two options here with the type of brew strength that you have, which is strong or regular. Strong actually drips a little bit slower, so it just makes the coffee itself stronger. Um, but it's set at regular. So when our timer stops, whatever this is on is what it will brew at. So I could set it to strong, and now it's set for 9.15 a.m. So that's how you set the brew delay. Set delay, select on off brew delay, select your brew strength, and you're good to go. The fresh brew timer, which I'll show you here in a minute after we get going, will actually tell you when your cup of coffee was started and finished. Uh, and it'll tell you how long since it was brewed. So that's really nice because maybe you want a really you want a cup of coffee an hour out and you're not sure if you still want it. Go ahead and check it there. So if we want to get started, the first thing we got to do is go ahead and open up the top of our coffee maker. So you'll see up here, you got the basket that holds your coffee grounds. And you're going to be using large filters on this. If you use the small filters, I can tell you firsthand knowledge that they will spill over and you'll get coffee grounds everywhere. Uh, inside your pot, outside your pot. Make sure that you use a large. And the, really the test is just to see does it come up to the edge. If it does, you're in good shape. You'll see this is where the water is going to percolate out of. This goes down back here into your reservoir. And that's where we're going to fill up. So I went ahead and already filled up six cups. So that's about a half a pot. That'll get you about three cups of coffee, a little bit over. We're going to go around here. We're going to go ahead and dump this in the reservoir. I can tell you, uh, if you're doing this late at night, sometimes you miss. You always want to make sure you have the light on so you don't soak everything. Because um, the last thing you want to do is spill that water, like I just did, into there. Because if I put my coffee grounds in the night before, and they're sitting there in some water, that's no go. So... I went ahead and filled that up, six cups. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is use my tablespoon. So this here is a tablespoon measuring um, cup or spoon. And what I will tell you, and you're gonna to have to play with this, but based on the coffee that you drink. So we have coffee that we buy that's uh, kind of made by a local coffee shop and we get their grounds, we get a certain type of crown, we get it ground really fine. And based on that, you know, what they're going to tell you is for 12 cups, you're going to do 10 scoops of your coffee. So if you want to just kind of subtract that in half, for six, you're going to do five. So for us, we typically, if we're doing six, I do a little bit more than five scoops of coffee. And the reason is we like stronger coffee, but also the flavor of it. If you're drinking coffee and it's too bitter, 
you've put too many scoops. So I would recommend backing down on the amount of scoops you're putting in it. And it varies from coffee to coffee. If you like dark roasts, it's going to have a different amount of scoops that you put in. The thing is, you just make the coffee based on what you like, and you really just got to kind of test it. So as you're making this, I would always try to do your half pot and your full pot and test around the amount of coffee grounds you put in. So I'm going to go ahead and add uh, five and a little bit more scoops on top of here. So there is my last scoop. And what I like to do, which is a little hard to see there, uh, but I like to push it down. I don't think it makes too much of a difference, but I put a, like to put a little uh, hole there in the middle so the water has somewhere to start. Um, now, so we're ready up top. We got our, got our uh, coffee grounds in. We got our basket ready to go. We got our filter in. The nice thing about the lid here is you can see that little fin there. When that comes down, that will actually hit on top of that. You might stop it, but it hits it and it pushes it in. So I started out there and closed the lid, open it up. You can see it moved it in. So everything's gonna percolate in. Uh, always a good idea just to make sure that's in the middle. If it's over here, it's not gonna brew as good. You're gonna get half water behind the screen. You're gonna get half going back in. Uh, it's gonna take longer. So just put that in. The other thing I would caution on looking at is making sure your filter, should you happen to get it wet, sometimes these filters like to bend in like this. If that happens, then as your water fills up, it's gonna sneak behind and spill over. So I always like to make sure everything's kind of pushed up too. It's not a huge process, but it's just a one check. So now we're ready to go, right? So we're not setting our timer. Uh, we wanna brew right now. So we're gonna go ahead and now everything's off and we're gonna go to brew now and you have your option for regular or strong. Uh, typically, like I said, we always go strong, but for speed purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it on regular. So hit start, nothing's happening. Well, the reason is, is because in the back here, everything's starting to heat up. So you can hear it now, starting to percolate. And there we go, we got water coming out. And I can assure you that this water that's coming out right now is already hot, uh, it gets hot really fast. The other nice thing about the outside of this is you can check to see how many cups you put in. So like I said, I put a little bit over six, but I also put a little bit over my five scoops of grounds. Um, but this is a nice reservoir here and an indicator. The last model I had did not have this, so I do like that uh, little attribute there. You can see though how fast it's already starting to come out, starting to drip down on there. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna actually fill up this whole screen, and I'll show that in a second, but you can see underneath there, coffee's already starting to come down and brew. So if you're looking at this coffee maker, Mr. Coffee, uh, it comes down really fast. If you're looking for something that's quick, this is it. And I can tell you that this thing you know, it has your pan on the bottom. It also keeps it very hot. So as this is brewing, I wanna show one other really neat feature, which if you can't wait for your cup of coffee to come out, right? So you hit brew, you need that cup so, so early. The other nice thing about these is that I can pull this out and it's not dripping, right? I had a drip fall, but that's just because. So what happens is there's a little button underneath there you can see, and this button right there holds itself down. And when this goes in, it pushes up the button and that allows everything to flow. So I can get my cup of coffee out, which I don't have yet, by just pouring real quick and nothing spilling out. That's a nice feature. What you have to be careful of is this is gonna continue to fill. And let's say I get sidetracked. I got my kids running around, my wife's got the kids running around, she gets sidetracked, she forgets to put the pot back in. This will overflow. And when it overflows, it's just gonna pour out of the bottom and go everywhere. So you don't wanna avoid that. So you can see I just push this in, and it starts filling it right back up. So this is what it's doing right now. I'm gonna let it brew up. I'm gonna show you what the whole thing looks like, and then we'll be back. Okay, so our coffee maker here is starting to finish up. You can see we got right around a little over four cups made. Reservoir is showing we have oh, less than two cups going. Top here, you can see that our basket's full again. If this basket was folded down, you can see how high that water gets. You could easily tell. So what you're gonna know in here, and you learn after you use this over and over, is when your cup's almost getting done. So if you're sitting in a different room, two things will happen. One, you'll start to hear that noise. So, so it's trying to suck up what's left, it's trying to push it out, and it starts to make that steaming noise. The other thing that's gonna happen is it's gonna beep. So you're gonna hear a beep as well. That lets you know that your cup is gone. And then once that beep happens, that's also going to be the indicator for when our fresh brew timer activates so we can see what time it was at. So this is really 
the overview of the Mr. Coffee, and maybe that's too much information for you, but this is exactly everything you need to know about the Mr. Coffee Maker. Key things to pay attention to. Type of coffee you're using, how, many, how much grounds you put in. It's all based on preference. You don't have to pay attention to what they say. Making sure you understand when you're setting your brew, when you're not, keeping track of the fact that this is in. Uh, bad things that we don't like about it. I would say nothing. Uh, the only thing that, you know, we're disappointed on is that this cracked on the last one, but this glass is so thin uh, that that's going to happen. Um, and we literally hit it on something. There's your indicator um, that your fresh brew is done. In my analysis, you see there's a timer there that I pushed. It's at zero, zero because it's letting me know um, how long it's been. It's been zero minutes. So that would actually count up from there to let us know how long ago the fresh pot of coffee was made. Uh, so anyway, if you like this review, make sure you hit that subscribe button. There's going to be a link down below to this coffee maker. If you're going to buy it, if you buy it from the link below, it helps us. It helps you. We appreciate you for watching. Uh, let's go ahead and check out this cup of coffee here. Ooh, look at that color. Nice and dark. Just the way we like it. All right. Thanks for watching. This has been another random review and how-to. We'll see you next time.